stay right there for a minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll go around this way. So this is the uh, this is the collection, and what you see here are the skins, like the chipmunk skin I showed you. Uh, these are striped grass mice from uh, southern Africa, and the skins, the skulls, and if there are any postcranial skeletons, are all stored in the same spot. And these are all organized taxonomically, meaning that all the uh, specimens that have a close evolutionary ancestor. Uh, that share a, a evolutionary ancestor are all stored together. So all the old world mice, which are um, a monophyletic group, uh, came or are stored together. Whereas the new world mice and the, the mice that we have in the fields of Illinois are down the way. If you look down this hallway here, all, you see all those cases. Every single case up on this floor is filled with rodents. It tells you two things. It tells you we have a lot of rodents, but it also tells you what the most diverse group of mammals is. The second most diverse group is bats. So let's go downstairs and we'll uh, take a look at some other specimens. You know what this is? That's a bat. This is a flying squirrel. It's a flying squirrel. And there are two species of uh, flying squirrel here in the U.S. We actually have flying squirrels in Chicago, but you never see them because they're nocturnal. Flying squirrels, whether they're the northern flying squirrel like this one is, or the southern flying squirrel like what we have here in Chicago, have a cartilaginous rod that sticks out from the wrist that supports the membrane that goes all the way to the back foot. The tail is flattened so that this animal doesn't actively fly like bats. It glides, and it literally could glide from this wall to that wall, no problem. And uh, these animals occur in um, forested areas where they can jump from tree to tree. Okay? This particular specimen was collected in 1898 in Washington State. But flying squirrels occur on, in other parts of the world as well. So while we have two species in the U.S., uh, there are other flying squirrels that occur in places like Borneo. Whoa. So notice that this also has a cartilaginous rod that sticks out and supports the membrane that goes all the way to the back foot. So flying squirrels share a common ancestor and uh, we, the reason we have this diversity of flying squirrels here is so that you, the student of natural history or of biology of flying squirrels, will have every single example of a flying squirrel at your fingertips to test whatever hypothesis you might have.